gonna do. This is an eight by 10 canvas. This one actually came from Dick Blick. I get my canvases from Dick Blick and from Michael's, depending on Dick Blick's sale, Michael's sale, that sort of stuff. Thank you, Becky. But this is the yellow label, one and a half inch thick gallery profile. And it comes white, obviously. And I've put one coat of Anita's black acrylic paint on that. So, hang on, sorry. So, I've let that dry. All you need is one coat for, the, for our other pumpkins, which I'll show you shortly. We put two coats, but we are going to be uh, covering up a major portion of this. So, uh, you won't need but one coat. I'm sorry, I'm so super distracted. Let me just close my laptop. I was gonna share something else, but um, I can't concentrate that well. My brain doesn't work that well. Okay, so I am gonna be using a palette knife today to apply some color to our canvas. Now my goal, is, the black is fantastic, isn't it? My goal is to create a really abstract, distressed looking blue background with some of that black peeking through, okay? So I've got about five colors of blue ranging from light to dark. So we got light, medium, 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 and dark. And I'll tell you what all of these are. So we have uh, aqua sky, calypso blue, we have True Blue, we have Windsor Blue, and Navy Blue. And we're gonna be using all five of these colors to create a really kind of abstract look, hey Barb, on our canvas right now, okay? Then what we're gonna do is let that dry. We're gonna come back and hold your, hold your breath. We're gonna come back and we're gonna stencil a gold, uh, stencil -y, our architectural stencil over the top, and then we're gonna paint a pumpkin. So it's gonna take us more than one life to do that. So bear with me today. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these colors on my shoebox <laughs> because I still don't have my palette. I don't have any idea where it is. It's lost in this crazy So give me a sec, I'm gonna get these out. This one's kind of stopped up. Oh, all right, let me, let me get this. Ugh. Hang on, this one's kind of dried up. So let's get, oh yeah, look at that. It's got all kinds of nasties. Hang on, I'm just gonna get some of it out. Hopefully it won't have a lot of boogers in it. So bear with me, that is the true blue. Then we have Windsor Blue. So just five nice blues. They don't even have to be the, this exact, these exact colors, unless you just want them to be. But five blues, light to dark. Okay, and we're just gonna use our palette knife. Don't stress about using a palette knife. Super fun, and the key is just to let it go and not try to be like, I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my palette too, just because I can't help it. And we may need it, and then I won't have to worry about it. Okay, the key is to let it go and just try not to be perfect. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So we're just gonna go for it, okay? So I have two palette knives. One is this long rectangle or tri rectangle, good heavens, triangular shaped knife. And the other one is this uh, spatula kind of looking thing. So I'm thinking my canvas has a slight dip in it a little bit, and I'm thinking I might struggle with this one, but I am gonna start with it. But if I change to this one, it's because it's a little shorter. And thank you, Elaine, for the sprinkles. 
It's a little shorter and it might do better. So I'm just gonna set that one here for now. And then we are going to start with our lightest color, okay? So I'm gonna go in and I'm literally, I don't know if you guys can see my palette. Can you see the whole thing? I'm literally just gonna pat a little bit of color on the bottom of my palette knife. This sure would be better if I had my actual palette. And I am just going to tickle that color on, okay? I'm not scraping really hard. What I'm doing is getting some color on my knife and I'm barely letting that knife touch. See how it's bowed up right there and the color don't wanna go there? I'm just barely touching my canvas so that it just kinda tickles it on in all these spots. So we can go all different directions so it looks really organic. And I'm gonna do a whole section with this color and then we're gonna add in more. We're just gonna build up color. Okay, so just dab it on and barely touch. If you, those cars are driving me crazy. If you scrape too hard, you're just gonna get a full on uh, layer of color. So that's the whole idea of just kind of tickling it on the surface. It makes those really organic spots. This is gonna be so much fun. So just tickle, tickle, tickle. And I'm just gonna use it until I'm used up. And you're, you're gonna want a good bit of this black still showing through because we're gonna be uh, coming in with a couple more colors. And so the more black you cover up at this point, the less black you're gonna have overall. So leave a good portion, maybe about 30% of your black showing at this point. And you'll be covering up more as you move to your next color. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna move to my next color, which is this color here, Calypso Blue, this uh, bluer, this next color up the scale. Now I didn't even wipe my brush off. I'm just gonna dab in and I'm just gonna come right back over the top and just very lightly because what you don't want is to over blend these colors. So you're just really gently adding that color over the top of this and then we'll bring it down a little into the bottom. So I'm just playing, guys. Uh, Angel, if you watch the replay, I listed them all. I named them all. So, um, and I'll probably uh, say them again as I go. Oh, see, I made a big mess there. That was like a, oh, look, hang on. Hang on, look. I just got a whole big old blob of paint on bracelets. It happens. They've had resin, paint all kinds of stuff on them, so. All right, so, hang on. So I'm covering up, I'm filling in some of those black spots, but I want some of that original color to still show through. I don't wanna hide it all. I'm gonna get that little divot, divot there that's kinda low. I'm gonna bring it down just a little into my canvas down here. Probably been better if I'd used some heavy body paint. So if you have some, you might wanna use that. Kinda of give you a little more depth. So I'm gonna, I'm just kinda of wiggling my palette knife Kind of make, do the alphabets. <laughs> so it's kind of all a little crazy. So you could do an A and then a B, a big O C. You just want it to be super organic. I'm gonna get a tiny, teeny, 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 tiny bit of white on my dirty palette. 
I'm gonna kind of blend it in here and I'm just gonna squish on, tickle on a tiny bit in this corner because I'm kind of trying to make like a little ombre effect, I guess, for lack of a better word. I want it to be light and then get darker, 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 darker. So bear with me. This is me having an idea in my head and just starting it. So it's So I'll blend some of that white in. I'm gonna come in with a little more of that second color. Try to cover up a little bit of this black. I really want about 10% of the black showing in the end. So we have a little more black showing right now than I really want, but we're gonna manage it. We're gonna work it out. Just remember to wiggle your brush, your palette knife. You don't wanna just come straight down and have all vertical lines. Kinda of wiggle around like that, like so. I'm gonna get a little more of this lighter color. Hey, everybody. Just kind of fill in here a little bit. There we go. That's starting to kind of look like it. Just cover up some of that black. So just move back and forth between your colors. Now we're gonna start with some of the darker colors towards the bottom. And I'm gonna use I think I'm going to go with this color here, which is the Windsor Blue. I'm just going to dip in, load my palette knife, see, and tickle on some of that color. Woohoo, I like that. And we'll incorporate a little bit of that up into the top. This corner isn't gonna wanna work because it's dipped down. So we'll kind of pat that on. I'm digging that color. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that. See how I still have some on my palette? So I'm just gonna pull a little bit of it through the top. Just gonna keep going. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of cover big area and then we'll fill in oh I like that look that's gonna be completely covered up by our pumpkin but those little organic dots are fantastical all right we'll keep going See, I got some of that color in there. All right, now I'm gonna move to my next color. And this is all, there's, there's no right or wrong, guys. Just keep that in mind. Uh, there's no right or wrong. You're gonna just be doing it until you like it, okay? The only goal here is to not muddy everything. You don't want to scrape your palette knife across your palette or across your canvas so hard or so much that all your colors become one, then you have a big muddy mess. So that is really the only hard and fast rule. All right, so I'm gonna bring some of this. This is the true blue. Dig in this color, except for that little bit of ickiness there. I think I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this true blue on my knife and come up a little. Man, the traffic is noisy today. Can y'all hear the traffic or is it just me? Is it just me? I 
I've got like three colors on my palette now. So I'm just gonna kind of take them up. Incorporate a little bit of all the colors everywhere. All right, and lastly, this is the navy blue. I'm just gonna go into that, load my palette knife. Fairly heavy, and I'm gonna hit this last corner. It does kind of look like the water, doesn't it? Y'all know me. I am all about the beach, all about the water, so almost everything, almost everything I do kind of tends that way, doesn't it? Seems like. I'm digging this. I cannot wait. We may have to blow dry it <laughs> and do the next step. I'm gonna just take a little bit of this navy and kind of pull it up just a tiny bit. Guys, I'm barely touching my canvas, okay? That is the key, barely touch. Because if you scrape, you're just scraping off color and replacing it and turning everything into a muddy mess. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. I'm gonna get a little bit of white. That's how you mix. <laughs> Just kind of blend some. See how I kind of made a hard line there? You don't want any of that. You want to make sure there are no like hard lines in what you're doing. So we'll just kind of drag that out. I'm gonna get a little bit of that white. Oh guys, I'm digging this. All right, who has time to keep going? All right, so this is our background. Totally loving it. I'm gonna futz a little bit more just to cover up a smidge more of that black up there. Not too much. I wanna keep going? All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put that in the thing. I'm gonna move this over. Give me two seconds. We're gonna sit this and let it dry for a second. I'm gonna grab my stencil and my gold, and then we're gonna blow dry this, and we're gonna do our next step right now because I can't stand it. I wanna do it now. Want it now. Let me find. All right, here's the stencil we're gonna use. And we're gonna use gold. Let's see, a little bright gold. And a stencil brush. Okay, so I'm gonna show y'all. So this, while we're waiting on this to dry, this is from Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Uh, it is Michaels. Uh, this is a folk art stencil, and it's basically just like, uh, I'm going to take it out of the pack. You can kind of see here, paisleys, is that what I'm trying to say? Well, there, it's just kind of a bunch of little paisleys, and we're going to use that to stencil over our background when it's dry. I'm going to go ahead and take it out, and then we're going to hit this with some heat just for a few minutes. Okay, so this, uh, like I said, came from Michaels. And it is uh, eight and a half by nine and a half stencil. Ugh. So we're just gonna lay it out and stencil and then we'll shift it around and stencil the bottom half as well. Let me just throw this away. Let me get my little heat gun and get this dry so we can just keep going. It's too cute not to, isn't it? So, thank you for post, thank you for pinning, Sherry. That was Sherry showing up. So I'm gonna get this dry. So basically we started with a black canvas 
and we used five colors plus a little bit of white to just kind of make ourselves a little bit of an ombre, corner to corner, deep blue effect with a little bit of that black still showing through. So hopefully we can get this dry enough to stencil. So now's a good time, if you can still hear me over the uh, heat, uh, if you have any question I can answer in the next few minutes while we get this dry, I will be so happy to answer your questions about our challenge or about our shattered circle group or about this art piece or whatever questions you have while you have my undivided attention. Love the blue. Oh, I love that name, Gretchen. Would love to have a granddaughter named Paisley. The stencil is Lisa. What's out of stock, Lisa? Why are you so awesome, Shanon? <laughs> It's almost there. This little corner is still a little wet. Yeah, the challenge is going to be fun. I think it might be, let me turn this off for a second. It's a heat gun. It's just a little cheap heat gun I got off of Amazon. I think it was like 12 bucks, nothing. Let's see, that feels like, oops, it's still wet right there. Let me hit that one more time. Yes, Jennifer, it will be open next week. Isn't that awesome? We're excited about it too. We have so much good stuff coming up for the holidays. You know, September through December is our free for all. We're gonna be doing some great, fun, exciting things. I think we got it now. Let's throw that back. Okay, so I want to show you what I was thinking about using for a stencil, and I might use it because it'll only take one go round. It is a large stencil that I purchased from Royal Design Studios. Let me show you real quick. Uh, these are uh, stencils I used in my old life as a faux finisher. So this would be super cool too, but I just feel like some of the elements are a little bit too big for this piece, but this is a great stencil. This is the Damask, I think, stencil. Super awesome stencil to use, but some of these are just too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use my Paisley. It'll just take a few minutes longer, which that'll be okay, won't it? All right, so we're good and dry. So now I'm gonna take my stencil and just lay it out. I want it to go all the way to the edge, guys, because we are gonna do a pumpkin here. So most of the middle is going to be taken up with pumpkin. So I do want to make sure that the um, edges are done nicely because that's kind of all you're gonna see. So I'm gonna shift this up and over so that I can see that all of my edges are going to have some of that color on them. Right now, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of tape if I can find it. Everything's all in disarray. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to do this part right now. I was thinking we'd come back, but we'll come back and do the pumpkin. So I'm gonna make sure that's nice and straight. I'm just gonna take one tiny bit of tape and tape that down so it doesn't shift. Now, I guess I'm gonna have to use my shoe box because <laughs> I'm crazy. And I'm gonna use the metallic antique gold. That's a nice metallic color. And I'm gonna put some on my little plate or my little shoebox lid and here's the key here's the kicker okay so I'm gonna grab a paper towel I 
okay? I'm gonna dip my brush into my gold, okay? You wanna make sure all the bristles are nice and covered. Then the key to getting a nice fresh stencil is to offload. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna offload a lot of that excess paint onto my paper towel before I go to my canvas. So now that I've offloaded, I can go to my canvas and I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of what it's gonna look like. So can you see that gold through there? That is going to be so awesome. Okay, so if you had overloaded your brush and didn't offload some of that color onto your paper towel, you would have bleed and um, it, would not, it would not be as nice a look. So you don't want it bleeding up under the stencil. And if you struggle with stenciling, instead of doing this swirl technique that I'm doing, you can go into your paint and just pounce it on like this. That also will kind of give it a little more opaque look, less translucent. So we'll do a little bit of both. Oh, it almost didn't offload. So we're gonna come in and fill in with that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna to worry too much about getting all that in the center because it's not gonna show anyway. But I do wanna get this gold on. Let's take a peek again. Look at that. I love it. It's gonna be gorgeous. Right, so let's get, just keep going. It's really gonna pop on this dark blue corner. It's gonna be beautiful. Pounce. You can alternate between pouncing. I'm gonna put a little bit more gold on here. Let's take a peek. Before you move your tape completely, pick it up and take a peek and make sure you like it. Looks super cool to me. So now I'm gonna take that up. I'm gonna lay it aside. I'm gonna grab my heat gun again and I'm gonna throw some heat on this portion of the stencil really quick just to get that dry before we move over so we don't smear. Won't take but a second. I really struggled between doing an orange background with gold stencil and like a dark blue pumpkin, which we may do later tonight, <laughs> or the blue with the orange pumpkin, the blue one, because I'm a blue girl, but we may come back and do uh, another one later on this evening uh, with the orange and navy pumpkin. So I just can't help myself. I love pumpkin so much. I just don't even know what to do. Okay, so I'm gonna find a place to just kind of repeat. Because there is no repeat on the stencil. It's mostly just a, you know, and a repeat means that you find the repeat of the corner. Like if you could find this piece somewhere else and then you would fill it in again. This one doesn't have a repeat. Already tried looking for that a million times. So what I'm just gonna do is come in and let me turn it, hang on, and just fill in some areas. So Gail, all I do is spray a little um, Mostenbacher's or 409 or some sort of cleaner on the painted side of the stencil and then let it soak for about 10 minutes and then use your stencil brush the same way you're stenciling to clean that paint off. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. I'm gonna try to get 
that up in there, and it may overlap a little, but we'll deal with it. So I'm gonna tape that down, we're just gonna go again. There's gonna be a lot of this covered up, so again, don't stress yourself too much about perfection here. All right, let's take a peek. That looks good. Now we just need to do the, I'm gonna hit this with some heat just for a second so we don't smear. And I'm gonna just hit this edge with some gold. See, it's a lot easier if you have a bigger stencil because then you don't have to move your stencil 20 times. But that's okay too. It's gonna be worth it in the end. Look at that, we'll hit that. We have one more little corner. And we'll turn it again and put that there. And there's no r rhyme or reason, again, for how I'm doing the stencil or, you know, placing it for these little extra pieces. Just whatever works, whatever fits, really. All right. Check it out. Oh my goodness, y'all. This is super fun. Check this out. Look how pretty. Look at that. Oh, is that not gorgeous? I stinking love it. Okay, so let me put that away. Yeah, Clorox, let's try. Let's try a G. Willikers wipe. Watch this. I'm gonna use this uh, paper towel that I just offloaded on. Put it down here. Get a wipe. You, the key is you wanna be gentle. Look at there, it comes right off. You want to be gentle so that you don't bend any of the uh, little pieces, okay? Because that is when you end up with a broken stencil. Look at that, it's coming right off. No worries. I'm gonna go ahead and get it off because I know me. And if I don't, this gold will be on the stencil for, for all eternity. <laughs> I used to be really good about cleaning them especially the bigger ones that are super expensive. So look at there. Yep. Just get that cleaned up as best we can, or as best as I care about. Okay, I am so... Look at there, 99% clean which is good for me, voila, with a baby wipe, or a art wipe from G. Willikers, or better known as, I can't pronounce that, Beard Mac. So check this out. Is that not gorgeous? Okay, so now we have a dilemma. I'm wondering really want to do the orange one and I have another I have another um, canvas. I'm wondering, do we go ahead and do the background of the orange one with the gold and then do both pumpkins tonight? Or do we just finish this one and be done? What shall we do? Think, think, Two, three, four. 
Look at here. I know it, it's pretty just like that, isn't it? And the metallic, it really, really pops. Digging it. So I think what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the background on this one in a similar manner. And then we're gonna come back tonight and we're gonna do both pumpkins at the same time. How about that? We're just gonna keep going. We'll set that one aside and we will bust this one open since we have a heat gun and can dry things easy. Let me see. That way we're doing pumpkins all at the same time. How about that? So we'll do backgrounds first and then we'll come back and do the pumpkin. All right, so we gotta do this black first. I'm gonna show you super easy way. I always use, <laughs> I'm knocking things off my table left and right. I always use um, a foam brush to do my backgrounds if I want it nice and smooth. It just goes faster and it gives you a nicer finished look. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll paint this. I'll let it dry. I'll dry it with the dryer and answer any questions We'll do the orange background on this one, and then we'll come back in a couple hours, let all that paint cure out, and do the pumpkins. All right, so let's get that off. I'm gonna do my sides. Can y'all tell that pumpkins and sunflowers are like my favoriteest thing <laughs> in the whole world? I really cannot wait to get started on sunflowers. Maybe we'll do sunflowers next week, all week. Won't that be fun? I wanna do some different color sunflowers too, not just orange. There are so many little paint boogers on the surface of this. All right, so I I'm gonna set this here. I'm gonna get that little bit of a something on there off. We'll smooth that out. And remember, you don't need but one coat because you're gonna be covering a lot of this up. So don't try, don't stress about getting it. Perfect. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and run this and dry this top surface so we can get started on our oranges. And if you have a question about our four day challenge, would love to answer your question. There's a link right here pinned to the page. You click that link, you'll get all the information you need. The link is not a commitment, guys. Clicking that link will, uh, will just tell you the information you need to know, which is uh, four days, starting Monday, 7 p.m., every day for four days. Each day is recorded, so if you can't make the live, you can come back and watch at your convenience, because that's how we roll. That is how we roll. Almost dry. I love this thing. Oh, we we'll definitely do a scarecrow. Almost dry. All right, guys. Voila. Voila. Okay, so I brought a couple of colors over to the table, pumpkin colors. I have uh, 
Folk Art Pueblo. Let's see if this even has any paint in it. I need a new shoe box. <laughs> Let's see if we got some paint. Again, eight by 10, painted black. Oh yeah, that's nice and nasty. Okay, so a little bit of a lighter orange. And we'll go a little hit up, which is burnt orange. Hopefully it's a little bit darker. It is just a little bit darker. And then we got heritage brick, which is kind of an orangey red. I think, let's see. <laughs> May have to use our palette knife to get that out. There we are. All right, so we're gonna kind of do the same thing. We're gonna start at the top, work our way down from light to dark. I am going to take some of this white and some of this first orange color and kind of blend myself a little bit of a lighter orange. Not too much, just to take it down a little bit. It doesn't really work very well on this plastic, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. So I'm gonna start in the top corner, same as I did, and just start putting on that color. This is going to be awesome. These Dick Blake canvases are bugging me. So just squiggle on very lightly. Tickle, tickle, tickle. See how I'm moving my palette knife? Kind of in like a S or a M or just a squiggle line. Got a little bit of blue there. I don't mind that at all. Not even mad. I know it looks great, don't it? It's looking spectacular. I'm gonna actually put some white in that. See if we can uh, make a little bit more of that. <laughs> Super loaded. Look at that. See, I didn't even blend it all the way, so it's already kind of two colors. This is gorgeous. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. I'm gonna come down a little bit further on this side. All right, now we're gonna go into that next color, which is the burnt orange here. I really got it. When we get off here, I'm finding my palette, my palette plate if it kills me. So I'm just gonna come in, kind of blend it up into, oh my gosh, y'all. Woo! Blend it up into that first color, and then we'll pull it down. This. <laughs> okay, imagine it with the gold. Little bit of that down. Just don't want it to be a hard stop between the colors. I want them to kind of blend. Yes, it, Florida Sky does look like this sometimes. I miss that. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more of this lighter color and just kind of pull it in. Now I'm gonna go to my darkest, which is the Heritage Red. Hopefully it will be as awesome as the rest. So let's just, oh yeah.
This is so pretty. I say so myself. This canvas is terrible. I'm gonna actually go to this palette knife because this, these corners especially are just dipping and it's super hard to get that long skinny knife there. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use this knife, kind of like a spat. Take a little bit of that red up. Oh my goodness. So just wiggle in your paints. The key, like I said before, is not applying a lot of pressure. You're just kind of tickling that color on. No, you're not scraping, you're just laying your knife down and wiggling in all directions. So a little bit more of this. I need a little bit more of that red. A brick. Don't it look, it's almost like fire. <laughs> we got fire. This is gonna look so good with the gold. Then we'll see which one we like best. Look this. This looks super awesome. Take a tiny bit of that. All right. Who loves this? This is super, super cool. I feel like I need to fill in a little more of that here. Just hit a couple little spots that are a little open for me. Just wiggle, make circles, make alphabet letters so you're not making straight lines. There we go, that's much better. Me like, all right, look at that. I need some hearts if you love it as much as me. We're gonna dry this. And then we're gonna stencil it. And then we will see who likes which one best. Stephanie, this is on an eight by 10 canvas. We're gonna get it dry. And we're gonna use our stencil again. Thank you for the sprinkles, June. Thank you for the stars. Ooh, look. So what color pumpkin are we doing on the orange, guys? Navy blue? Just do the opposite. What do you think? We're gonna get this dry so we can stencil and then we have decisions to make. Couple of spots. All right, I think we may be 
Try and now for a stencil. Definitely running out of shoebox space. <laughs> These are so gorgeous, guys. I could not be happier with the way they're turning out. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So we're gonna use the same gold. We're gonna use this metallic antique gold. And we're gonna stencil that right on just like we did the other one. So we're gonna use our stencil again. again. So I'm glad I cleaned it. I'm gonna put some gold on my plates. We'll get us another paper towel. Hey, Sue. So how many of you are in the fall challenge? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna lay this kind of like I did before. I wanna make sure it overlaps the edges. So I want it to go all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna kind of tape that where it is with my tape. And I've got my stencil brush. This is a clean one because I dipped the other one in water and you don't want to ever use a stencil brush wet. You want to make sure it's dry and has a soft bristle, okay? You want them to be stiff, but you want them to be soft, right? So yay, Cheryl! So you're going to dip into your paint and then you're going to offload to get the excess off, right? You may have to go a little heavier on this one. This is gonna be awesome. I think we're gonna stipple this one because it'll give us a heavier application. I'm gonna put, peel this back in just a second and show you. This one is gonna really be one of those where you have to almost see it in person to catch that gold. Let's, let's take a peek. Oh my goodness, look. I love it. Whoa. <laughs> this is fantastic. Let me take a peek at it, see if anything needs some help. Goodness, y'all, that looks so good. I'm gonna show it to you. Look. Can you see it? There, there, there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it did just jump out of my hands, didn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna hit this with a dryer just for a few seconds, and we're gonna finish up the edges. We'll move this. I don't know. Let me see what I want to do here. I think I will lay it here and tape that down. And we'll hit this end. This is the resin. You're right. The resin is going to make this stand out so nicely. Try not to care too much about it being perfect. All right, that looks great. 
So let's hit this edge a little here. Boom. Have to clean that again in a minute. So let's take a peek and see how it came out. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. So, dry out. so we are gonna start on the orange pumpkin. So on the orange pumpkin, we are going to do, or on the orange background, we're gonna do a blue pumpkin. So it's probably Felicia in the guides. All the things in the guides. So we're gonna paint this first. I'm just gonna base coat it out with a the navy blue that we used in our other piece. So this this one's gonna have this color pumpkin and this one this one's gonna have this color pumpkin. So hang on to your hats. So I'm gonna do navy blue first. And we're gonna just base coat out this pumpkin and the stem, and then we're gonna use our palette knife to make it crazy. So I'm gonna put my blue, and I'm just using a small uh, flat brush to add in my color for this, for this particular coat. All right, so we're just gonna come in and trace out or paint out this pumpkin. I got a little bit of a dry brush. And I am gonna kind of leave a little orange space between. This brush is terrible. This brush has been abused a little too much, I think. I'm gonna have to get something else. Hang on. That brush was terrible. It was frayed, man. All right, much better. So we're just going to take a few minutes and paint out using the navy blue. Paint out our little pumpkin sections. I don't know if you can even see the paint on my palette. Then we're gonna add some fun movement and color with our palette knife. So, got a little quiet in here. Gotta hold my mouth right when I paint or nothing works. All right, so there's section one. I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, it is easier to shade, isn't it, Marilyn? If you just leave a tiny little hairline. Makes it way easier. We're gonna be adding some crazy old color with our palette knife too, so that, that'll get covered up nicely. What's wrong with my brush? So I know this is the boring part, but it is a necessary evil. Now it's a good time to go grab yourself a glass of wine. Right, there's section two. We're just gonna keep going. This is the big fat front section. We'll leave a little bit of a line. Yeah, if you missed the background, watch the live from earlier today. We did this background live. So go watch that. And then you'll know what we did. Got a 
I lost myself down here at the bottom. Obviously, I wasn't holding my mouth right. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going. Got a couple more sections to go. And then the fun's going to start. Actually, we're going to paint that uh, stem, too, just to get our head around it. Then the fun is going to start. I love this navy blue on this orange, don't you? Super fun, super fall. Navy blue is just timeless. Anyway. Thank you for the sprinkles. Yeah, I gotta be quiet while I'm doing this because if I don't, I can't concentrate. So y'all talk to me. Somebody talk to me. Is that Syracuse University? I also, I went to uh, South Haven High School here in Mississippi and our colors were orange and blue. So this is my high school colors. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Maybe that's the tickets. All right, one more little section. And then we'll get to the fun stuff. Yeah, the background is awesome. Ah. Absolutely love. So glad we came back and did the orange. I just started doing, I wanted to do both really, but I ended, I started doing the blue and then we decided while we were live, because I'd been talking about doing a blue, an orange one too, we decided to go ahead and just jump on it while we were there. While we're in the groove. All right, getting there. All right, about got it. It's almost a shame to cover up all that beautiful background, but gotta put a pumpkin. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm gonna paint the um, stem and then we're gonna have some fun with this pumpkin. So on the stem, just like we've been using, I'm using the raw umber. Announcements, Robin, it's in the announcements. So I'm gonna use the same brush, I just cleaned it out a little, and I'm just gonna base coat out our little stem. There's something in there, I'm trying to get it out, icky. So I do want to have those little roots that kind of go into our, into our pumpkin a little, but I'm gonna wait to do those till after we finish the pumpkin because if I start with my palette knife, I'm just gonna mess those up. So we're going to wait detail that at the end. So there is how we start. All right, so now I am going to get a couple of the other colors. I think I'm gonna start, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of black over here. Oh, hang on. A little bit of black, because we're gonna need that for shadowing. Ugh. And we're going to use this Windsor Blue. And we're going to use True Blue. I 
think. And we're gonna put some white on our palette too. We're just gonna start messing around. Thank you. Swear. I got issues. Thank you for pinning. <laughs> I might put a teeny bit of this aqua in there too, because you know, it's my favorite color. So we're gonna throw a little bit of that out here as well. So I am gonna use this small palette knife. It's just a tiny little uh, triangle palette knife. It'll give me a little more control. So what I'm gonna do is start with a lighter color just gonna load a tiny bit of paint. Less is more when you really don't know what you're doing and where you're going with this. So remember that less is more. And we're just gonna start futzing. So I'm just gonna take it. Might get a little bit of that navy in there too. And we're just gonna start futzing around. So we'll get a little bit of that blue again. So we're gonna do light colors on the right side and dark colors on the left. I'm gonna grab up a little bit of that white and just kind of pull that all the way down on that side of my pumpkin. I'm kind of having to, I need to turn it a little, so. All right, so I'm gonna do that on all the sections. So we'll get a little bit, I'm gonna need a little more, bit more of this blue just as a starter. None of my colors wanna come out today. So we're gonna get a little bit of that blue. I'm just gonna wet that area a little. And I'm gonna get a tiny bit of that, uh, that sky color. We'll do that. And remember, honestly, no joke, I am just flying by the seat of my pants. Anything I do at any given moment may be garbage and we may have to cover it up. So don't think for a minute that this is all pre-planned and that I know exactly what's happening because I do not. <laughs> so, but we're gonna just keep going. We're gonna do it again on that last one. Just add a little bit of that blue. Try to stay in the lines a little bit. If you get out of them, don't fret. Don't fret it. All right, we'll get a little bit of that aqua sky. And I'm just tickling, just like we did the background for each one of these, uh, and we just kind of tickled that color on. You're not scraping hard or pressing your palette knife down hard onto your canvas. You're kind of just barely touching it to your canvas and just letting the color go where the color goes, okay? You're not really trying too hard. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of black on the opposite side of my palette. I'm gonna come in and just kind of fill that in on the left side of each of these. I will do more with the center one because it is obviously bigger and we can't just fill it all in with black, but I'm just gonna take some black. I actually wanna add a little bit of this other color I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna go back and forth and add color to, till I like it, basically is what I'm gonna do. Get a little bit of that. Get down in this corner a little. We'll get some whites. And me likey. I'm gonna go a little bit more white. 
just a little bit on the corner. I'm getting tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of paint at a time, okay? Not getting a bunch of paint. All right, so now we're gonna work on the next section. I'm gonna get some black. I'm just gonna come on the left side of that section. Bring that down. Got a little black there when I didn't want it. And I'm gonna go in and just start adding a couple of the other colors. Just blend them lightly. Don't go crazy and make them super muddy. All right, let me go here. And get some of this crazy color. So really, there's no rhyme and reason, okay? I know, I was, I was watching that too. It, it, I'm sure it'll happen eventually. That's just how I roll. I'm gonna get a little bit of that black for right here. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of white. And just hit that edge. Now guys, if you're not adept with a palette knife, I encourage you to try this anyway. It is super fun. Just allow yourself to just play, okay? That's what art's all about anyway. Allow yourself to just play. And don't stress out about it. All right, I'm gonna add a little white to this big center piece. And I can still see a little bits of my orange showing through and I'm not mad about that at all. Kind of digging it. Add some of that aqua. And now I think I'm gonna go into my navy and hit this side. Notice I still had my icky I still had stuff on my palette knife. I'm gonna get a little black and do the same thing right on the edge. Just tickle it in. Don't be afraid. If you mess up and it starts looking awful, just stop what you're doing, let it dry, and then when it's dry, come back and play some more. You can't really mess this up. You just have to know when to walk away for a minute and let it dry up a bit. And come back. All right, I'm gonna hit that bottom. And we're gonna fill that in a little, kind of blend some of these colors. I'm totally loving this. Yeah, it's kind of freeing using a palette knife. It's kind of freeing. It, it helps you helps you to let go of perfection, I think. You know, we, we tend to want to paint everything perfectly and using a palette knife helps you let go of that desire or that uh, mentality a little bit. So, we have... Uh, some sort of fire truck or something coming through. I am loving that. I'm just gonna go on to my next section. I feel like I don't have enough of this color right here though, so I'm just gonna throw a little on top. So, now I'm gonna flip the script, I think. Nah, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna show you this close up though, cause I know it's kind of hard to see, but that is where we're going. So we're gonna start with this blue again. Just kind of add some of that blue, that navy that we started with originally. We'll go into our black. Kind of shadow that on that side. 
Now I'm gonna go in with a little white on this side, which is probably the wrong thing. I should, probably should have flipped that, but we talked about this the other day. I'm not really a rule follower. I just do what I want. <laughs> so that's how it's gonna be. Let's add some of this other color in. I keep turning it because uh, otherwise I'd have to stand up and get my head in the picture and nobody wants that. So remember, just tickle on the color. You're not using a lot of pressure. But get a little bit more white and just hit that right there. What do y'all think so far? Is it getting there? All right, we've got one more to do. So I'm going to go into my black. I'm almost out. This thing is not really preserving my colors as well as I thought it would, but that's okay. We're gonna make it work. I'm gonna go into my black, and I'm gonna hit black on the inside edge of this, which is what I should have done on the last one. That's okay. I'm gonna flip it just for a sec. All right, we'll go back. I'm gonna go into my navy. A little bit of the other colors. I'm getting super messy about it now, but that's okay. We'll tune up when we're done. And the aqua. Really kind of got that on the wrong side of my knife, so I'm gonna flip around this way. White. more aqua I straighten this out some I got a little crazy here I got a little crazy need to define this side a little see how I kind of lost definition on this side I need to fix that up a little bit I'm actually gonna use a little bit of white to try to do that, just kind of right along this edge. At the very top. And I think I'm done, except I am going to add, voila, gold. Gonna be very light about it because I don't want it to blend in. And if it looks like it's gonna blend in with all the other colors, then what we'll do is just let it dry a few minutes. But I'm gonna get gold just on the bottom of my blade and just very lightly hit a few spots. It is kind of blending, so I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes before I do it. And now I'm gonna go in and do my stems. So I'm just gonna get some of this brown. We're just gonna paint in lightly. I'm gonna add some green too. Some of this avocado green, same as we've been using. all week. Back in the brown. Now 
Now we need to add in those little root things that go into the pumpkin. So I'm actually gonna use this. Love this fancy tool. So I'm gonna go in, scoop up a little bit of that brown and just lay in a little root or whatever you wanna call those things. We'll do one, let's see, right here. One more right here. I'll just do a little green on top. Don't try to be perfect. This is supposed to be very abstract. If it's perfect, you're not doing it right. I'm gonna get a little bit of white. Just tiny bits. It was not a tiny bit actually going to grab a brush real quick and kind of smooth that out some. It was not a tiny bit. I need brown, 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 brown. Brown, brown, brown. And White, white, white. Too much. What is wrong with me? a little tiny bit of black just hit that right at the top and uh, I'm gonna let this sit okay I do want to come back and add some gold and I want to futz with that stem a little more but I think we need to dry remember when I told you to walk away when, when you feel like things are not going exactly how you want them to, want them to and things are starting to get a little muddy, kind of like my little stem there. Sometimes you just need to stop what you're doing and walk away, and that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of color right there. All right, so we're gonna set this one aside, and guess what? We're gonna do this one, all right? So we'll let that one dry for a few minutes, and then we'll move over to this one. I'll flip the script over there, and let me make sure you can see, and we're gonna do this one like a regular pumpkin with oranges, yellows, etc., etc. I'm gonna start with my brown and my paintbrush like we did before. And just paint in the stem. This is raw umber. Any brown will suffice. Do not just go out and buy raw umber just for this or for anything, for any matter. Use what you got. Okay, so now we're gonna just base coat in our orange color. So I'm gonna use the lightest of my oranges, which is this Pueblo. If I can get it out of the bottle. Is this the one I struggled getting out? I can't remember. Wait till the resin goes on. So orange. That one's pretty icky, so that ought to spread nicely. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go in. And 
and just put a quick coat of orange on all the sections. Not even gonna try to make them perfect, just like the last time. Just wanna get a coat of color on so you have something to work over the top of. Try to be quick about it. Leaving a little peek of that blue showing. Little peek, little peek, little peek. Big section. They are so sweet. I'll see y'all. I'll see you. Just want to get as close as I can without touching that next section. This, I love this orange on this blue even more than the blue on the orange. Y'all, this is spectacular. All right, my dry, my precious, my, this, this paint is just icky. Can you see how blobby it is? Blobby. All right. Need to quit trying to be so perfect. Practice what I preach. All right, almost done. Really close to that edge. Last section. Yeah, this one's my favorite. I do love the orange too. This one speaks to me. Okay, so we got that first initial coat of orange on. So now we're gonna have some fun with palette knives again. So let me throw some colors out here. I'm gonna throw out some of the burnt orange. That would be really pretty, Lisa. White on this blue would be really pretty. I just wanted it to have a bunch of contrast. We'll get some of this out. This heritage brick, I think this is the one we had trouble with before. Let's see. Yep. Whoops, that was messy. Oh, I see why, look at that. It's just a big old nasty spot. And I brought some antique gold as well, which is a yellowy color. And we have white still and green. So we're gonna just get started. I'm gonna start with this long skinny palette knife. Nope, I'm gonna use this one. And I'm gonna get some of this original color on. 
and just apply another little wet coat of color. And then on the right side, I'm going to do two chunks. I'm going to do two of them. It won't take six years. I'm going to grab up some of the yellow just on the corner of that palette knife. I'm going to kind of follow that curve. Right of the pumpkin. Bring it in. I'm going to grab up a little white. Oops, I didn't want that. I wanted white. A little white. I'm going to do the same thing here. A little yellow antique gold, and then a little white. Now I'm going to take some of that middle color, which was the burnt orange. It's really similar to this color, but I'm just going to add with this dirty brush. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow in it too, and add that to my center. A little tiny bit of yellow in. And then on the outside edge of that, I'm going to add the Heritage Brick, which is this ready brick color. So we're going to go all the way around the edge. I'm digging that. A little color on the back. I'm going to get a tiny bit of black just on the very edge. Yes! What do you think? What do you think? I'm digging it. I'll scoop up some of that white into my yellow and kind of make myself a little lighter yellow color too. All right, so let's get some of the heritage brick. Go right alongside there. This looks pretty cool. Kind of digging it. That black's a little stark, but we're going to fix it in a minute. Add a little tiny bit of black to that edge. And a tiny bit of white to that edge. And I'm gonna go into that white and yellow mix again. And I'm literally, I have a tiny bit on the back of my palette knife. And I'm literally trying to just pop it, just pat it in. Creates a little fun texture 
and kind of helps blend and incorporate that all together. Digging it, digging it, let's keep going. All right, so what am I doing, what am I doing? Do we want some of this first? This is the original color again. Then I'm gonna go into, get that off, some of the yellow. White. Pop, pop, pop. Need more white on that outside edge though. That's for our highlights. So I started getting a little muddy there, so I'm just going to pop it and walk away. Heritage brick to, sec to section it off. hard to do those tiny little pieces. I'm going to put just the edge of my palette knife in the black so it kind of makes a straight line. You see what I'm doing there? And just kind of line in some of that black in between those two sections. Very faint. And I need to color correct to the side over here, so I'm going to do it this way. Got out of, I got kind of crazy over here. All right, love it so far. We're just gonna keep going. Do these two little sections. And start with the original color. Just get some of that on. I do my heritage brick, touching that black. That heritage brick is disgusting. I get a little black on my palette knife, and make my little lines. So just keep going into your colors. I need to do my yellow. Two of these in one night might have been a lofty goal. Lofty, lofty goal. Everybody doing all right out there? <laughs> Does anybody go to sleep yet? Get our yellow. Some whites. Need some more of this pre-made yellow stuff I did. All right. 
I'm gonna get a little bit of one of these colors and fix where I messed this up a little bit. Got a little crazy with that palette knife. I'm gonna flip it upside down for one second and throw in a little yellow. And a little bit of this red right there. All right, let's do that last section. Y'all, the resin is really going to make these pop big time. All right, so let's do the red first. I know I'm like doing things crazy and different every time. That's just my ADD brain. You'll have to just forgive me. Go back into our original color, which is what I should have started with. <laughs> All right, let's do yellow. Probably haven't done one single pumpkin section the same way. That's how it rolls. Little whites. Pop, 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 pop that color. I'm gonna add a little black right on that edge that separates the pumpkin sections. And I may be done. Let me futz a little. Maybe done. I'm gonna get this teeny little skinny thing. And I think I'm gonna just hand paint that instead of messing it up like I did the other one. I do need to get my little stems in though. Throw a little green on top. Now I'm just gonna take a small brush, just a small round. There's a lot of red in that. And I'm gonna second coat that brown. I'm gonna add a little bit of black. And we'll add some green, make it really messy. A little bit of green on the right side. We'll add a little tiny bit of white on the left side. I'm even gonna add a little bit of yellow. A little bit of what I'm gonna actually use my little knife and add just a tiny bit of yellow or yellow white on these little things. Now, I really want to add gold to this one too, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to let this one dry a minute while we come back to this one because it is completely dry except for a couple of little spots. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of using my palette knife to add that gold that I wanted to add, I'm going to grab a brush and dry brush, don't wet it. You want it to be dry. I'm gonna go into my gold and just blend it into my bristles, okay? Blend it in really good. And I'm just gonna take my brush and highlight a 
couple of sections with that. That is awesome with that gold. I'm gonna show you that close up. I need to save that for the other one. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that gold now? Very nice. So now I think I was gonna futz with this just a tiny bit. The stem, just at the top maybe. We're not gonna give it too much attention because it's a stem and who cares. There you go. I'm just gonna use my brush to just straighten it up a little. There, I'm happy with that. So this one is actually, both of my devices say low battery. This one is ready for glass and resin, so I'm gonna set it aside. And I think what we'll do, this one's still super wet. So I really wanna add um, some gold to it too, but it's super wet. So let's try this way. Yeah, it's not even really showing up that well. So we may have to let it go. Oh yeah, it did. So just find a couple of spots that might need a little extra something. Like right here, need something. Just very, very lightly tickle that on because this is still wet and you don't want to smear what you've already done. All right. I'm gonna let that go. Let it go, let it go. Okay, I'm done painting y'all. That was enough, enough. <laughs> Yes, I am gonna dry it with a heat gun, but what I'm gonna do is start, I'm gonna clean up my mask just a little, and then we're gonna talk about glass and resin. Push that over there. So here are both of our pieces. This one needs heat gun heavily. Big time, big time. So I brought a couple of things with me. I know you can't see, let me scoot that up. Brought a couple of things with me. I need to raise that just a little. Brought a couple of things with me to play with. I know this one, you can only see the gold in the background if you wiggle it a little. So I did find some green vitrograph that is super cool. Look at this piece. So I think I am gonna add him to this pumpkin over here. And I was thinking about adding a little fun something to this one over here too. I couldn't find a really great piece like that. So I may cut a piece or two. So there's a kind of a curvy one, but I think we need one more to make it happy. So maybe this one is super cool. Let's try to break that. Look at that piece. Maybe we'll do it over here. It has to sit right. So we'll do it there and there. Let me wipe that paint off. <laughs> and then we'll make sure to add some glass around that. So that is gonna be super cool. It is super dimensional. And if I say super one more time, somebody slap me, <laughs> not you. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with the blow dryer or with my little heat gun for a few minutes. I'm actually gonna move these off because I'll probably blow them to kingdom come. So if anybody has any questions about the craziness you just witnessed, now would be a good time to ask. 
while I get these two dry and ready for resin. What do you think, guys? If, did anybody go and sign up for the challenge today? Give me a big old heart if you signed up for the challenge today. The sunflowers and pumpkin challenge that's starting next week. Look at you. I see one heart. Look at the heart. Yay. I'm so excited. You guys are going to have so much fun. I love our challenges because we really ha always have a lot of uh, really new people who think they can't paint. I have so many people who will say, I can't paint at all. Do you think I can do this? And I'm like, I promise you, you can. And I totally make believers out of them. You can do it. Don't for a minute think you can't. All right, that was pretty dry. I'm gonna come over here. Aren't they pretty? I can't wait to get the resin on them because, you know, like we talked about this yesterday, sometimes when you just use paint, everything looks really matte, but when you add the resin, it just makes everything pop, makes all the colors blend together and makes everything pop. The canvases, Robin, are eight by 10, both of them. And if you miss the background, then uh, you can go back and watch that. We did that about 2.30 today. Yes, Angela, the challenge is separate from the membership. Anybody who's a member can go to the member Facebook page and in the announcements, catch the link and go and ch uh, do this challenge for free. If you're not a member, it's $10. And that is for forever access to the videos. No obligation. That gold does not want to dry. Aren't they gorgeous? You do have to feel it. <laughs> I can tell that's not dry. That metallic's going to take a hot minute. What? What? I did saw your question, you goofball. <laughs> Till it's dry. Thank you for the sprinkles. That's awesome, Robin. I can see that that is, oh, it's dry. Hang on, let me check it. It's hard to tell when it's hot. That one's dry. I'm gonna do one more thing before we add the resin and it won't take but a second and it is imperative, okay? So I pushed my paint over here, I'm gonna grab it. These pumpkins are just floating in air. You can see, they're just floating on a background and they don't need to be doing that. So I'm gonna wet a brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to the corner. I'm gonna put this up here so you can see it. A little bit of black to the corner of my brush. And then I'm gonna pull it through. Then I'm gonna come under my pumpkin and add a little bit of a shadow. for the pumpkins to sit on. So they're not floating in air. Let me try that again. Just a tiny bit and then pull it across. All right, so there's that one. This one will show up better. Let me get some more water. Black on my, seriously? And just follow the curve of your pumpkin. 
at the bottom and then just pull it across follow the curve pull it across and just give your little pumpkin a little something to set on so it's not floating on air little people fussing at us all right much better I'm gonna hit that with a blow dryer for five seconds. That's about how long it'll take. That one's already dry. Voila. It's not much, but it's something. And we are gonna use the same as all our other pumpkins that we've done. We're gonna use a little bit of clear Starfire. This is Starfire, not clear. Uh, Starfire glass so that everything we've painted will, you'll still be able to see. If we use a color on our pumpkins, it will hide the painting we've done. So we're gonna use the Starfire and we're gonna use our little uh, green vitrograph. This one is so cute. Uh, and we're gonna add our glass, and then we're gonna resin. So I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna grab a handful and I'm literally using a handful on each one. So I'm going to, I'm gonna move that just for a second because I'm gonna start it right here so that the vitrograph isn't just floating in air. It actually has a purpose. I don't like that big old piece. So, we're going to add this vitrograph coming out of that glass. I'm going to come down just a little further. And we'll do one more little section here. You can use as little, thank you, Angela. You're gonna be have so much fun. Uh, you can use as little or as much glass as you want. Because I'm using clear, everything that I painted will shine right through the glass. It's not gonna hide it or cover it up, disguise any of that color. You'll see that as we get started. It's gonna, sh it's gonna uh, blend really nicely. So I'm gonna come down a little further with this one, and then we are gonna stop. That's all the glass I'm gonna use. Just a touch, just for interest. Just to make it interesting. All right, so there's that one. So over here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add some glass to that outside section. Need to get a little more. Whoops, glass going everywhere. And big pieces again. All right, and we'll set these in place in just a second. First, I'm gonna get a little more for another section, and then we're gonna do our resin. And we're gonna add some frost on the pumpkin too, so. Don't miss that. <laughs> I remember adding frost yesterday. I'm trying to just use little ones. Because this bag is full of biggies. I've got a few more here. I'm gonna walk away, plenty. All right, so that is Starfire Glass. And I'm gonna set these in place. One here, one here. Make sure they're kind of included in that glass so they don't just not make sense. Let's see. 
I'm gonna move that into place exactly where I want it after we mix our resin because it's gonna wiggle away anyway. So let me put this up and we're gonna mix resin. We're gonna do both of these at the same time. So yesterday when we did our little skinny pumpkin four by 12, we only used half of an ounce of resin for each one, okay? What are you doing? So I really think I am gonna only be able to use a half ounce of resin on each of these two, but I am gonna make a little bit extra just in case. So I'm gonna make actually for both of these, I'm gonna make an ounce and a half of resin. So I'm gonna do three quarter ounce of each part. I'm gonna grab my gloves. And we're gonna get to mixing and Y'all are gonna love how these turn out. I already know, cause I know. So we're gonna pour three quarters of an ounce of the hardener into one cup. And I really don't trust myself today, so I'm gonna put it over here to pour because I got arthritis shaky shakes today. So I'm gonna pour three quarters of an ounce of hardener in that cup and then we'll pour three quarters of an ounce of resin in this cup then we're going to mix them all in a separate cup let's see whoa whoa Nellie thank you Catherine so I have a cup that I've been using for about a month. Stray glass by the stem. Oh, thank you. Thank you, we'll stick that there. So this is a cup I've been using for so long, it's got resin buildup all inside it, <sighs> but it's perfectly fine to use. It's very solid. So all I'm gonna do is dump my two, I'm gonna scoot this up just for a minute. I'm gonna dump both my resin parts into this cup and mix them because you can't mix them in the baby cups. It's too much resin. So we're gonna dump our hardener. And make sure you get all the gel goodness out. Then I'm gonna, oops, dump my resin. Then we're gonna mix for three minutes. Catherine's gonna time me. And we're gonna mix this for three minutes. We're gonna scrape the sides, make sure we get all of it mixed up really well. So now's a good time. If you have questions about the challenge or about the shattered circle or about the pumpkins that we've done today, now's a good time to ask because I'm gonna be stirring for three minutes and it's a boring job, and yeah, so y'all need to entertain me somehow. Ask me questions, make me laugh, do something. Give me some entertainment. Ooh, I got a nose itch. Not good when you have resin and uh, gloves on. So three minutes, see how I'm scraping the sides down? Now scrape across the bottom. Make sure it's really well mixed. I love these two pieces. I, and I may have to sell them for a million dollars. They are so pretty. You guys, I, I can't even know what to say about how they look in person versus how they look on that screen. Hey Sandy, sing us a song, love bug. Yes, David is here. There is only a tracer available to Shattered Circle members, and that will be in the guides tomorrow. You got resin on your nose? I've done that a million times. I've got resin on my nose, resin in my hair, resin on my hands, resin on my clothes. Hardly anything I have is worth wearing because everything has resin. 
Yeah, I just use it over and over and over. Does it, because I'm measuring in other cups, it doesn't matter how much resin is built up in here and dried because I'm measuring in the other cups and then just pu pouring it in here to mix. So yeah, I use it, I've used it for probably a month or two. <laughs> Uh, I, Laurie wants to know how I do all this delicate work with arthritis. It takes a lot of concentration sometimes. So if I get super quiet, that's why. Um, and I just deal with the pain, you know. It is what it is. Ain't nothing you can do about it, right? <laughs> Sammy, you need to join our, our four-day challenge. That The link is shown in the thread. It is a four-day challenge where we show you how to... Uh, make a art piece. Here's the piece we're going to be making in our challenge. It's a sunflower and pumpkin piece. I'll show it to you fully when we're done here. Um, but we'd love to have you in that challenge. It's only $10 and it'll give you a good idea if that is something you really want to get started in without a huge investment. Thank you, Catherine. Catherine says time is up. I didn't make my glass stems. I bought these off of Etsy. It's called Vitrograph, and I just purchased those off of Etsy. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my canvases back towards me, and I do not have four, or I do not have enough risers to elevate both of these uh, right now on my table, but what I'm gonna do is go ahead and um, pour resin on them, and then when the live is over, I promise you I'm gonna elevate them. Don't panic, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna get started, and I'm gonna start by adding resin to my glass bits, okay? So I'm gonna just drizzle resin right over the top of my glass. Y'all hear the traffic? People crazy. So just drizzle over your glass. Make sure you get these things too. Make sure they're covered really nicely because they tend to be fragile. And I wanna make sure that's covered really good. And then before I, I'll have to adjust that in a minute, but before I apply the resin to the rest of this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the glass on this side and then I'll divvy out the rest between the two. Oops. This piece of glass is dead sexy. That stem or the little curly Q glass on this one, oh my goodness, perfect. Could not have been planned better. Sheila, you'll need to email Sherry at info at artshattered.com. She'll get you taken care of. So I'm gonna make sure I got lots of resin on this piece. We don't want it breaking. And then we're gonna just divvy out what's left. So I'm just gonna pour. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna dump that one upside down. I'm gonna pour. Then I'm just gonna leave that cup upside down on that while I futz with this one. So I'm just gonna use my little tool to pull that resin all the way to the edge of my canvas. And it really, really makes these colors pop. So pretty. Wish y'all could see it in person. I'll try to make sure and get a good picture that really represents how it really looks because I'm telling you, I'm looking at my screen and I'm looking at what's in front of me and 
just does not do it justice. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna run that out. Make sure that's all covered, all that glass. Everything's about to die. My iPad's gonna die, my phone's gonna die. Low battery, I gotta go fast, y'all. I'm losing it. I don't have my charger. My charger over there? Dave? I'm going to pull this off. Ugh. We'll move this glass or this resin around. I'm trying to grab my charger so my phone don't die. Okay, will you come around behind me? Behind me? Or around? <laughs> okay. So let's move the resin on this side. You can unplug that single black thing. That's the heat gun. Plug that in. And then hand it to me. And I will. No, no, that's not it. That's my laptop. Sorry. It's just a small block. So I'm going to move all this around. Where the cup was dumping, it's a ton of resin. So I got to squish that around actually just plugged into the without the block into that little multi and the block is sitting on my desk somewhere this blue and orange is my favorite what do y'all think what are you thinking out there y'all being awful quiet Sit it right there, I'll grab it. Make sure we're still live, because man, everybody's quiet. All right, give me a second, I'm gonna plug in so my phone doesn't die, right in the middle. All right, there we go. Now, I've got everything covered, I think, so I'm gonna just take a peek and make sure I don't have any skippies, and I do that by looking kind of in all directions around at the art piece because anything that doesn't have resin is gonna be matte and all the resin pieces are gonna be super shiny. So I'm just looking around. I don't see any skippies. Looking in, it looks great. Let's do this one, same way. Look at it from an angle. I see a little skip right there. A little skip right there. All right, so now all that's left is to run our torch. All right, so I'm gonna put this here. I'm gonna ditch my gloves. And I'm gonna use you can, I unplugged my heat gun so I could charge, but you can totally use a really inexpensive heat gun to pop any bubbles that are showing up in your resin. I am a, a big art girl, so I use a big old propane torch, but don't let that scare you because you can totally use a tiny little kitchen torch or you can use a heat gun like the one I just showed you. So we're just gonna hit those real quick, pop any bubbles that we created in the resin when we were mixing. Just quick, 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 once over, boom, 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 done. That is how you make glass arts. Are they not fantastical? I love them.